Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Lucas. And we are two aspiring filmmakers making unnecessary commentary on famous movies. Each week, we will randomly select a film to analyze, discuss, and review. We will select the film at the end of each podcast, so you will have ample time to watch the movie before the next episode. We are slightly qualified film students. Hello, everybody. Welcome Hello. to another episode of Slightly Qualified Film Students. This week, we're going to be talking about and reviewing Lars and the Real Girl. Yes. Uh, early Gosling movie after The Notebook, but before Drive. Yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it was my first time watching it. It's, it's like... I guess I didn't actually read what genre it was on Google, but I thought it was a comedy because the concept of it is... Here, I'll just... You know what? I'll just read the plot summary real quick because it sounds like okay. a comedy, uh, but it's, it's not really. Um, <clears throat> okay, it's pretty long. Uh, extremely shy Lars, played by Ryan Gosling, finds it impossible to make friends or socialize... His brother, Paul Schneider, and his sister-in-law, Emily Mortimer, worry about him, so when he announces that he has a girlfriend he met on the internet, they are overjoyed. But Lars's new lady is a life-size plastic woman. On the advice of a doctor, Patricia Clarkson, his family and the rest of the community go along with his delusion. So I guess it doesn't sound that funny. Uh, but I, I still thought that this was going to be like... Like a dramedy, I guess. But it, it's it's funny moments were kind of fleeting, you know? Like, it, I think it's mainly a drama, for sure. Yeah, it's mainly a drama. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a touching movie with... Mm-hmm. I think this is one of Ryan Gosling's uh, stronger performances. It's, I'd say it's one mm. of his more, like interesting characters that he actually feels like he's a different kind of person because yeah. you know i mean he gained some weight for this role he looks different and he plays a very different guy from what he usually plays he's playing this very shy insecure delusional man and you usually he's playing you know people like the driver or uh you know crazy stupid love just where he's like more sure of himself where he's kind of like this confident dude and in this movie he's kind of he's just like some average really shy guy and i think it's a it's a very different performance from him yeah for sure uh yeah i mean i think that it was a great first watch entertaining um just an overall there there were some pretty funny moments i'm not gonna lie like right at the start there's the scene where this old woman hands him some flowers for him to talk to a girl with or like give them to a girl and then he just like throws them immediately <laughs> when he sees a girl uh yeah you know i i had some pretty serious laugh out loud moments here and it was nice it was kind of refreshing like even though it is a drama it doesn't feel too heavy uh it's you know it's it's a drama but it's not like it's kind of a feel good at the same time yeah it's not like shame or like yeah uh i don't know we haven't done any crazy dramas yet yeah not really besides shame shame uh you know this is almost like comparable to like manchester by the sea (laughs) oh yeah almost forgot about that one uh i would kind of compare this to like uh Inside Lou and Davis, where it's like yeah. a drama, but it feels kind of lighthearted and not uh, so so dramatic that it's like overwhelming. Because you can still mm-hmm. find a lot of jokes in Inside Lou and Davis. Yeah, uh, sure. it's kind of that same like almost like dark comedy type of vibe here. Yeah, or like the farewell, something like that. Uh, I I agree with you though. I think Ryan Gosling gives an interesting performance here. Um, I'm not sure if Lars is actually supposed to have a mental illness or if he's just really shy, but he has, you know, kind of like a tick or something with his uh, blinking. Um, 
just little mannerisms like that that I thought were pretty cool that Ryan Gosling like added to the character um yeah it was directed by Craig G- Gillespie uh mm-hmm. who directed I Tanya it's his only other movie that I've uh heard of he, oh he, yeah. he actually you know what he did that really bad movie called Finest Hours or The Finest Hours about the fishermen oh, oh wait he did <laughs> he did Cru- he did Cruella he just directed, he directed the new Cru- Cruella yeah oh yeah Cruella Finest hmm. Hours oh yes I remember when that came out yeah I saw a bunch of commercials for it looks awful uh but yeah yeah 6.8 I, I, yeah <laughs> This uh, is a fine directorial debut, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's just a film. very, like, chill indie drama. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, let's, let's stand get into scenes. standout scenes. I think for what? me, it, it was... I think that the lake scene is an obvious standout scene. Great performance. Uh... But I think that the scene to me that really like stood out was the bowling alley scene. Actually, it's just mm. it's just a chill scene. Lars is bowling. Uh, I already forgot the lady character's name. Uh, um, his coworker, Margot. Margot, he's just bowling with Margot and some some friends, and it's just like. I think the moment that he realizes uh, that he's in love with a real person, and I think that it's that scene where you can get the sense that he's going to... Like, that's, like, the catalyst for him uh, starting to say that Bianca is dead, is that scene. Right. Because he forms forms connection with real people there. So to me, that's almost, like, the most important scene in the film. And it just... It's feel good, man. It feels good. Yeah. I, I, I teared yeah. up during that scene. Just seeing them be happy <laughs> is, is nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the ending lake scene is a clear standout. Pretty big emotional scene. But honestly, I just really like the, uh, the dinner scene when uh, his brother and Karen first meet. Bianca. Bianca. Yeah. And it's just it's like classic awkward comedy sort of. It's very mm-hmm. very awkward, very cringy, but yeah. also like really sad at the same time. Mm-hmm. And um I I really love that scene. I think all the actors are really good and the dialogue is really funny. Uh mm-hmm. and I I love Paul Schneider just like sitting in the corner saying nothing trying to f- figure out what the heck is happening. His facial yeah. expressions are hilarious. Um, yeah. I think that's actually probably one of the most comedic scenes in the entire film. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think that Emily Mortimer in that scene, great. She gives a great performance here. It's mm-hmm. weird. I think the first Emily Mortimer movie until this point I, I've seen was Shutter Island, where she's the... Uh, uh, one of the crazy people or one of the people working there pretending to be crazy spoiler alert. right yeah 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 i don't think i've seen her in anything else but she's she's good in this she's really good mm-hmm. yeah 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 so um audience questions question mark no question mark. no no audience questions this week damn uh, i mean i think it's a pretty obscure movie I yeah, it's a pretty indie I had film. heard of it, I think, from Luke. He has this, like, poster with a bunch of movies on his wall. I think I, like, had seen it on there or something. And I, so I knew what it was. But before that, I mean, I'd never heard of this. Even though it is Ryan Gosling. This is, like, pre-Gosling Gosling. Well, actually, I guess The Notebook. This is post-Notebook. But he gained some weight, so, you know, wasn't as popular. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it only it only made it lost money at the box office. It only made yeah. eleven million. Uh, and then the director went on to make finest hours. So 
Yeah. <laughs> well, um, let's take a quick break and then we'll hop into the actual review. Okay, right. and we are back. Mm-hmm. Uh, heading into story and originality out of 10. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that this is like kind of what carries this whole movie is the concept and the just weird, weird, like quirky vibes this whole story just gives to the rest of the movie. Uh, is this concept of this really socially inept man who finds love in a sex doll like it's so weird uh he he's talking to the sex doll as if it's a real person and everybody's just going along with it like everything's normal and it's wildly original i mean the only thing i can think of that's kind of similar uh is um oh what's that one robin williams movie where he uh uh, where he's play, he's like pretending to be the old Mrs. Doubtfire Mrs. Doubtfire yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. kind of gives me like those kind of vibes I, I don't know why I don't even know why it's okay. it's wildly original as well I'm trying to say I haven't really seen sure, sure. much like it and I think yeah it's a really interesting concept they pull it off uh and to me, it's that concept itself that is, like, carrying uh, the dialogue and the acting is just the sheer ridiculousness yeah. of the whole idea. So I, I really like this story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I really like the story, too. I think it's very original. And the biggest thing I like about this story and screenplay is the fact that it doesn't ever feel, like, cliche. Like, I feel like if you're making a film about this it would have been so easy easy for them to have you know conflict within the town people like making fun of Lars and beating him up and going and you know doing something bad to Bianca or so like there's so many options there to do something that is pretty kind of obvious whereas yeah. this film focuses more on Lars's character's internal conflict and that's the overriding kind of problem throughout the film. And they're not doing all these other kind of external conflicts within the town. The entire town kind of just accepts him and is trying to help him through his inner issues. And I really like that because it's just it's so fresh. Because, you know, when I'm watching this movie for the first time, I was totally expecting, you know, something really bad to happen to him or someone, you know, freaks out at him at church or something like that happens and it never does it's just kind of this it's a character study and it's not about these kind of cliche issues that probably are kind of just hollywoodized and we see in movies that probably wouldn't really happen in real life yeah in this life people either ignore him you know they snicker behind his back but they don't really do anything really mean or people are supporting him, and that's usually how life goes, um, especially if you're living in a small town like that. Yeah. Where everyone kind of knows each other. Totally. Yeah, for sure. I think that overall, I gave it 9% out of 10. I think it's a very strong story, uh, and it, you know, holds this movie together, holds it up. Super original. Yeah, I give it full marks. I give it a 10 out of 10 because I think this is one of the most original films out there. Yeah, damn. And uh, I love the story. Nice. 10 Deserving. out of 10. Well deserved. Uh, all right. So we're moving into beginning, which is out of 5%. Uh, I think overall this beginning is very solid. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's hilarious. You have the aforementioned rose flinging scene. Uh and it's mm-hmm. very, very good setup. My only, like, critique of it is that it doesn't, like, flow very well into the middle section of this movie. They they show his day-to-day life, uh, and then his co-worker talking about the sex doll, and then they just have to cut to a screen that says, like, six weeks later. Which, I mean... I, sure. Yeah, I don't know. I just... It, 
it took me out of it a bit. I feel like it should have flowed better. Uh, but other than that, yeah, very very solid beginning. Nothing really wrong with it. It's hilarious. Uh, it sets up his character super well, even just from that opening shot of him kind of hiding behind the curtains, not yeah. wanting to talk to uh, his his brother's wife. Um, you you get the sense for who he is, and you get all his little mannerisms and the way he talks and the way he acts, like right in the first three minutes. Uh, yeah, so it's a very very solid good beginning. Yeah, it's really good setup. It sets up its character really nicely, and no voiceover. It's very visual storytelling. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't really. There isn't even that much dialogue because Lars is very quiet. So you're going through a lot of his day to day life and understanding his character through uh, the cinematography and the acting, because there isn't a lot of dialogue to really carry you through that. There's no voiceover. So I really respect it when films do that. Those are my favorite types of exposition because it's a movie, so use the visuals, use the actors, don't rely on, you know, extra story dialogue or uh, just just voiceover Uh because that's kind of cheating, and this film doesn't do that at all. Um, It's very much just about his performance and just watching him go through his day-to-day life. I agree. It doesn't flow very nicely into the middle. Yeah. But they are setting it up, like they set up the the sex doll and all that stuff, so it does still make sense. Um, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a pretty good beginning though. It sets up nicely. It's good exposition, and it doesn't feel like exposition. You know, it kind of just feels like you're just beginning the movie. It doesn't feel like you're being told a lot of information. It's just little stuff that you notice and that carries on throughout the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I gave the beginning a very solid four percent uh i really like the way this film opens i think it's super solid uh just it doesn't flow perfectly into the next part uh which you know not that big of a deal so solid four percent yep same solid four out of five for me yeah um let's hop into the ending here which is also out of five um, I don't know. I really like this ending. It's very... Yes, it wraps everything up into a nice bow, but it's like, it's just kind of, you know... It's nice. Heartwarming it's nice. and yet sad. Yeah. Because I think that after the bowling scene, you get... Uh, you just... You get the sense that he's starting to connect with people. He's kind of overcome his shyness a bit. Uh... And I just like, I really love the ending line. It's just like, you want to go for a walk? She's like, yeah. It's not like there's this Mm -hmm. big romantic, he kisses the girl and he gets her and they ride off into the sunset. It's just like a little thing. Like, he's actually willing to, like, talk to a woman by himself. Uh, That shows his (laughs) development and his progression throughout the movie. So mm-hmm. I think it does wrap it up really nicely, but not in like an overly cliche way. Uh, I wasn't sitting yeah. there being and like, "Oh, this is so cliche." Like it's it's very solid. You shed a tear. Yeah, I cried. I cried during the lake scene. I think. Yeah. 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 Which is pretty much the ending. Also. Yeah. I mean, it's when he's he, decided to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kill her off. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a pretty s- sad ending, but it's also heartwarming at the same time. He he kills off his delusion, Bianca dies, they have this, like, funeral for her. I was going to call it a fake funeral, but it, it's like a legit funeral. I mean, everyone in town came out to support him, mm-hmm. and people care i mean they care about him and that's kind of the reason behind all of this but they do care um and i think that's such a lovely thing to just have a movie where people are actually nice you know there aren't a lot of movies out there that just show like kind-hearted people yeah and I, it's just refreshing yeah it totally um, is i mean every character in this movie has a bright side or yeah yeah and yeah, they're 
I feel like every character in this movie, even though they may have been awkward or have doubts about it at the start, like Paul Schneider, he still becomes, you know, they, they care about him and they're going to do whatever it takes to help him out. And I love that. I thought that, yeah, I think it's a really beautiful ending. It's not really ambiguous at all, but it wraps it up nicely. It's sweet. Um, I cried the first time I watched it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I gave it a solid 4 out of 5 for the ending. Yeah, I gave it a 4% out of 5, too. Very solid ending. Made me cry, technically. Yeah, beautiful. Screenplay and dialogue, out at 8%. Uh, I think that this screenplay is is kind of beautiful like it's it's a very simple story uh and they just they just like get across such a nice character arc in such a short amount of time uh Mm -hmm. it's it's really a beautiful thing like this is an amazing character study uh and you know i i think that in general it, it feels like some scenes... Uh, honestly, no. Nah, all the scenes are, are super solid. Like, there's not really any one scene that you can say shouldn't have been there. And the dialogue is hilarious. I mean, just Lars's way of speaking, uh, just the way he, he talks, is it's all written uh, very, very well, creating this really unique character. Uh, that definitely sticks with you like I think that this is one of the more memorable performances because of how interesting this character is uh, and the way it's written for Ryan Gosling and yeah I mean it's a very very solid screenplay it's funny when it needs to be but it also has some tearjerker moments Um, yes it's it's really a beautiful screenplay really is Really beautiful screenplay. Um, yeah, I think there isn't a whole lot of dialogue throughout this film, but when there is, it's very meaningful. I think Patricia Clarkson's dialogue is really nice as the psychiatrist. Um, yeah, and it, it, it just flows really nicely. It's nice and short. It's only like an hour and 40 minutes, including credits. So pretty nice, quick indie film. And it's simple. They're, they're not trying to do too much. And I think that's what makes this film actually impactful because it's just focusing on that one, on Lars. It's a character study and it's not worrying about a lot of other stuff. It's just focusing on his um, internal conflicts and his delusion and it helps him grow as a character throughout the runtime. And I think that's kind of what any, you know, indie filmmaker, simple script needs to do. Just be simple. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I think it's a really beautiful screenplay, great dialogue. I gave it a solid 7 out of 8. Yeah, I gave it a really good 7% out of 8, too. Very, very solid screenplay. Now, soundtrack out of 7%. I was a little bit underwhelmed with the score. I think it's a beautiful score, but just compared to some of these other movies we've been doing, a little underwhelming until they played this Talking head song. This must be the place that I really love. Uh, so I gave it I, I gave it some points for that because I love that song. Uh, I, re- I really love the theme song of this film. Like the, I, it's just really beautiful. Like when the opening credits started coming up and they were playing that song, I was like, damn, you yeah. know? Like I, I just vibe with that music. This these are the soundtracks I like. I prefer these to you know Hans Zimmer. I don't, I don't know. I don't get into those epic soundtracks. They just I, I don't they don't interest me. I like those little. I'm a Alexander stick soundtrack. Desplat Grand yeah, Budapest. Okay. Well, yeah, Shape of Water. Nah, nah, Grand but Budapest like, type. Yeah, of thing, you Grand Budapest. You know what I'm saying. But like, yeah, my favorite soundtracks in films. My favorite scores usually like her Arcade Fire. It's very like acoustic, yeah. chill kind of music. Or, you know, I, I just like that kind of soundtrack, and this film definitely has that vibe. It's very, like, guitar, acoustic guitar kind of melodies, and I, I like it. Mm-hmm. It's a vibe. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I was gonna, I was leaning, like, I, I gave it a 6% out of 7. It's not full marks, but I was almost leaning that way just because I really love that Talking Head song. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> solid 6% for me. Not quite a seven, yeah, same. but... Solid six out of seven. 
It's not a score I listen to, but solid six out of seven. Um, I enjoy it when I'm watching the movie. Yeah. Yeah, so productions design, costumes and set out of six. I um I'm very, very solid in my opinion. Uh yeah, I agree. Especially the costumes. Yeah, I really you can do so much when you have like winter coats. Mm-hmm. There's so many sure. costumes that they get to do with scarves and layers and you just get to like bounce a lot of colors in your costumes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that they got really creative with uh, every aspect of the costumes for Bianca. They really, like, almost made a character out of this sex doll. Um, I think Lars (laughs) has iconic style with just wearing those winter boots everywhere, even to the funeral. Um, And, yeah, I think that overall costumes are very solid. I like the small town vibes. Uh, nothing too crazy in production design, but overall, it's just very solid, and the costumes uh, boost it up. Yeah, and I really like that pink room where Bianca uh, sleeps, or her room. It's kind of just this weird separate room in the house where they keep Bianca, and it's like all pink and just cool set decoration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought production design, set, decoration, very solid. It's an indie film, so you have to give it the benefit of the doubt that it's not going to be, you know, of the same level as those millions, million dollar budget films. Mm -hmm. But for the budget it has and for the film it is, I think it's a very solid production design. I give it 5 out of 6. Yeah, I I gave it a 5% out of 6 as well. So, location selection out of 6... Yeah, I think there's some really beautiful landscapes that they use in this film. Um, there, There's one shot of him just driving his car when they're driving to the psychiatrist where you just see the mountains and kind of the snowy ground. It's it's very like Manchester by the Sea kind of location vibes where yeah. you have this like small snowy winter town. Um, and it's very nice. Obviously, it's a small town, so they don't have a lot of locations, but even, like, the bowling alley or, um, like, the the office where he works or the church. It's just little locations like that that are very nice, and they clearly put some thought into them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I mean, the lake, just the town in general, like, yeah, all the these lake. shots That's of true. this the lake is a very nice snowy, location. small town. It's, it's very nice. I love the vibes. Uh... And that the forest where he kind of where he's like in his little tree house singing. Yeah, it's like that. That kind of it's cool. It, it just feels like it just feels nice and like warm. It's like an inviting little town. Feels feels good. Yeah. I, I really like the vibes. Once again, I don't think it's that impressive, especially you know, feel like you gotta hold uh, um, hold higher standards Sorry. for uh. You gotta hold higher standards for indie films, cause uh, yeah, they totally. that's what they normally are the they're normally the uh, geez, speak English. Uh, they're normally the best, the better uh, location selection movies, just cause that's all they have. And I don't think Lars is mm-hmm. that incredible, but I think it had just enough going for it that I gave it the five percent out of six. Yeah, same. 5 out of 6. It's not full marks by any means, and it's definitely not silence marks. You know, silence marks is on another level with location yeah. selection. It's like it's not even the 7 out of 6. It's like it's like another level. Mm-hmm. But um, it's, yeah, solid 5 out of 6 location selection. For sure. So uh, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back with cinematography. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Okay, we are back. And hopping um, into cinematography here. Out of 10. Now, this film came out in 2007, and it's not the highest quality. Although, to be fair, I did watch this film in, like, 360p. So, yeah, maybe I'm a little... little uh, yeah, you know, the quality wasn't great on my computer. But, I will say... 
I think I think it's a pretty pretty nice looking film. It's just it's got these like major indie small town vibes. Yeah. Um, I'm not too I don't think it's crazy that experimental about the cinematography yeah, here. Yeah, it's it's very basic. Yeah. It's very basic. Very basic. There's not a lot of movement, not a lot of tracking shots. Mm-hmm. There is some cool like hexag- hexagonal bokeh at some points during like the more romantic I guess or uh, important scenes here uh, but right. you know overall uh, not too crazy cinematography um, yeah it's, it's just not that impressive to me but it, it gets the job done I mean I, I do like the kind of drab color palette of it all because obviously it takes place in some north American city. They filmed this in uh, Ontario. Right, okay. Ontario. Yeah. yeah, I think it's supposed to be America, though, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. It could be Canada. I don't really know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's nice enough, and I, I think I do give it points for visual storytelling because it does tell, it gives us a lot of information throughout this film without dialogue so it is about what they're capturing on screen mm-hmm. i don't think it's very beautiful quote unquote it's it's kind of just you know normal camera setups but it's more about the precision of what they're showing also the framing's pretty nice i gotta admit there's some some shots where there's some pretty cool dead space framing that's kind of going on but yeah i do think it's it's fairly basic cinematography yeah, I I decided to go with the seven percent here. Uh, I don't know. Just looking at some of the films, I gave an eight. Like even I feel like Bottle Rocket is like a slight tier ahead of this, just because all the movement. <laughs> just because Bottle yeah, Rocket, same. I give it is tracking, at least. Yeah, I also gave it seven out of ten. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think it's on the same level as the eights we've been given. Yeah. Um, editing though, out of eight, I think that this film has some clever edits, and some well paced scenes. It's not insane for editing, uh, but I think overall, I think that narratively speaking, it's edited super solidly. Uh, great punchlines, great one liners that they end scenes on, uh, and you know, overall, there's just nothing really wrong with the editing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no continuity mistakes I noticed. It's just kind of very solid editing mm-hmm. where you're getting the job done. It's quick. Like, it's a short film, like we were saying. It's not too long. All the scenes play out pretty nicely. Um, the awkward pauses and silences that are edited in there are pretty pretty nice and add to the tone of the film. Yeah, I think it's a solid 6 out of 8, without a doubt. Yeah, um, 6% no for really me, there. 6% for me as well. Um, yeah, with that being said, let's head into acting, which is at a 10%, and I really like all the performances here. I think I think it's very solid. Uh, Ryan Gosling obviously gives a notably good performance. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, of course, we have uh, Emily Mortimer giving a great performance. Um, ah, shoot, what's his name? Uh, Paul Schneider. Yeah, Paul Schneider. He does his thing. Uh, what else have I seen him in? Have I seen him in anything? Parks and Rec? Yeah. Yeah, Parks and Rec. That's what it is. And then he left. <laughs> he was there for two seasons and they dipped. Damn. Yeah, he's Mark. And what he's did Mark. you do after that, Paul? Yeah. He's Mark. I don't know what he He did. left because he thought he thought uh, it wasn't going to be, you know, he didn't think that it was doing anything for his acting career. But what did you do after Parks and Rec, my guy? Not really anything notable. Yeah. So you should have stayed on Parks and Rec. Should have. I mean, um, it kind of gave Chris Pratt a career so i mean yeah it gave chris pratt a major career also you know paul schneider leaving parks and rec opened the doors for rob Lowe and uh adam adam scott to come in so yeah, that's okay 
facts. <laughs> I would I prefer some Rob Lowe and Adam Scott. But yeah. Paul, you do you do a good job in this movie. You're solid. Mm-hmm. Um, you have some. You, there there was really one emotional scene that he he did that I was like, damn, what scene was that? Oh yeah, when they're in the basement just talking about like what what does it mean to grow up, and he starts talking about their dad and how he shouldn't have left him. Yeah, he gets teary eyed. Mm-hmm. You got some emotional stuff there. I mean, Ryan Gosling without doubt is. The, the main part of this film his performance is incredible uh i think it's one of his most that he characters that he's really just like been enveloped into i mean this and half nelson are probably his two strongest performances in my opinion mm. um, wow wow that's interesting what about la la land huh eh? good good yeah. i don't i i i don't think his performance is that interesting in la la land Fair enough. I mean, I mean, I haven't seen it. It's fine. Didn't he get? <laughs> did he win Best Actor? No, he got nominated. Emma Stone won Best Actress. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to beat his performance in Half Nelson, where he plays like a heroin addict teacher. Like that's just one of those performances where it's like, you, you're just gonna if you're it, it, it's you're playing a heroin addict teacher. Like that's just a good acting performance written on the page for you. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. But yeah. Uh, I think Patricia Clarkson also stands out here as the therapist, um, as the doctor. She has some really, like, interesting scenes with Ryan Gosling as she's, like, pretending to be giving Bianca physicals and stuff. Yeah. Um and I think their conversations and talks to one another are really nice. Yeah. Also, Kelly Gardner as Margot. Very subtle performance. Yeah, and, but like, uh, she plays just such a innocent, kind of naive, sweet girl. And it's it's a very, she like... pulls um, it off. Heartwarming performance. She did it. Yeah. Yeah. I think overall, no real bad performances. I don't think it's quite on 10% level, but I overall gave it a 9% out of 10 yeah same 9 out of 10 very solid 9 out of 10 everyone gives a good performance with some pretty notable ones yeah yeah uh entertainment value out of 10 percent uh i think that overall this was a solid movie it it kind of had me a bit bored at some segments because it, it's not that funny and well it is funny but the the focus of the movie is not the comedy. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that even though it's shorter, it's not necessarily a high-paced movie. Like, it's, it's very uh, dialogue-heavy, um, you know. And sp- speaking about, like, cinematography, technically there's nothing I could really... Like, I wasn't enthralled by the visuals or anything. Um, so, you know... I think that it's slightly lower on the entertainment side. I would highly recommend it. Overall solid. Uh, it just, I don't know, wasn't as entertaining as some of the other films we've looked at. Uh, but overall, solid r- drama slash, like, romance slash comedy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, s- yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a little slower of a film. It's not super exciting by any means. I I think it's a it's a good film and I I enjoy watching it. I definitely enjoyed it a lot more on first watch, but I still thought it was enjoyable, and I thought it did a good job just you know keeping me engaged even though it is kind of just a very simple simple film. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's like a nice relaxing indie film you can just kind of throw on and chillax. I think it's like PG thirteen, so you know it's family friendly. Yeah, and just it's got good morals too. Like you know, this this is a film you want to show your kids. I mean, I know it's a sex doll, but and most kids won't get, catch on to that. It's like you know, everyone's kind hearted and everyone's supportive, and that's kind of the stuff you want in those type of movies. I like it. Um, I gave it an eight out of ten. I still enjoy it, but it, yeah, it does have slower parts. Yeah, I gave it an 8 out of 10 as well. Uh, I thought it was a bit of a low 8 for me. 
wasn't necessarily my favorite watch uh, out of the 30... This is the 32nd film we've done, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. But overall, solid, solid, good watch. 8%. Uh, overall technical achievement out of 15. Uh, this movie is not that impressive technically. Uh, I gave it the 7% in cinematography and the 6% in editing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, just nothing really stands out. I mean, nothing stands out as particularly bad. Like, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the cinematography. It's just very average. Uh, Nothing really jumps out at you visually. Yeah, I agree. Um... Yeah, looking at my 13s, I don't think it's at the same caliber. I gave Mystic River a 12, and I feel like that's about the same. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I gave Lars and the Real Girl a 12 out of 15 for overall technical achievement. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's not focused on the technical aspects of this film. It's still solid, but it's more about the story and the acting, and they're not worried too much about the, the actual aesthetic of the film. Yeah, I gave it 12% as well. Uh, yeah, just not on the same level as the 13s. So, that being said, we got our final scores all tallied up. And after a quick break, we will give our scores and move on to the wheel spin and see what we will get next week. Yeah. Got our final uh, scores tallied up here. Tallied up. Mm-hmm. Ready uh, to see where Lars and the Real Girl lands. Where does it On our ranking up? system. Uh, we have a pretty big ranking system. Yeah, right this is our here. 32nd film, so it's got some competition. Uh, I overall gave Lars and the Real Girl an 82% out of 100 very solid I still can't believe I gave them an enemy an 81% because I enjoyed enemy a lot more than this movie <laughs> uh, you were hard on enemy like, I was oh we were God, both hard on enemy you also gave the place beyond the pines an 81 bro yeah like, yeah I mean dude. retrospectively I just had no idea at the start of this podcast I gave Parasite a 90 which is too high uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. 82%, it, it's solid. Uh, I think I was being a little nice to this movie, in all honesty. Like, this this was an enjoyable watch, but I, you know, I don't think I'll be revisiting it for a while. Uh, but, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Solid. Yeah. 82%. 82%. I gave it an 83%. Uh, just one off with story and originality. Cool, We're pretty cool, much cool. the exact same. Yeah. Yeah. Which... I mean, I like this movie. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> it's. It's. It's, uh, it's, yeah. it's. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um. Which I like. I liked it a lot more the first time I watched it. I think. Mm. But yeah, it's a good movie. Enjoyed it. Nice. So that gives us an eighty-two point five as our. Um, average score. Yeah, so it's and on the means... same tier as I'm thinking ending things and atonement. What What do you think? But is it on the same tier? I don't think it is on the same tier. As either? I yeah. don't think it's on think... the same tier as either. I think it's below both no. of those. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that, that so means it's that in means... 25th. So it's it's up there. It's in our top twenty five technically. Twenty uh, fifth place. Yeah. yeah, it's above Bottle Rocket. Um, I yeah, I think that overall solid place for it. It's in the bottom third, but I mean it really can't compare to some of these other movies we've looked at. Uh, yeah. Will anything and almost ever? Almost all the movies we've we've done so far, like we haven't really done a awful film yet no or even like just a pretty bad movie all of our films have been like the lowest the rating one mediocre is where the wild things are which is like 
Eh. It's, it's meh. But, like, you can respect it on a technical level. And about know? time, I don't know, man. I don't like about time. Love that movie. Um, yeah. 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 Let's spin that let's, wheel, baby. Let's, let's do it. Let's spin this wheel. I got uh, screen recording up. And, yeah. Let's yeah. see. What's going on the wheel this week? Oh, what true. is going on? Um, I think it is short term twelve. So, oh no no no, that went on last week. Fargo, it's Fargo. Oh, nice. Fargo's going on. Yeah, love to see it. So we got another Coen Brother film going on the wheel. Nice. I've only seen Fargo once in my entire life, like hmm? six years ago. You saw Fargo once? Once. Like yeah, six years I ago. I saw Fargo uh, probably b- after I saw The Big Lebowski, which was probably about two years ago. I think that Fargo is still a pretty solid in my top 100. Um, not Fargo sure. Fargo was my first Coen Brothers film when huh. I was like 10. Wow. That's low key very young. Yeah, I mean, I remember thinking the, it was so weird. I was like, "Why? Why are they so nice?" You know, I didn't understand. True. I was like, the "Why is she being so thing. nice to the? Why is she being so nice to the guy who just put a dude in the wood chipper?" Doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. But upon thinking, it's a dark com. I didn't understand what a dark comedy was back then. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I got the wheel here. I got screen recording. Let's spin it. Let's see what we're getting next week. You know, I'm kind of in the mood for just like a hardcore drama. Or I'm in the mood like for something intense a here. A thriller. Yeah, I'm something in intense, something like a thriller. Like We've a had some low-key movies the last couple. I want I want to watch The Machinist. Yeah, that's true. I really want to watch The Machinist. Yeah, that's that's a pretty intense movie. I, I just it's Machinist. on my watch list, I think, or I'll put it on my watch list. But What's what's a movie I haven't seen that I really... You know what? I've never seen 12 Years a Slave. That I've always wanted to watch that movie. movie is a lot. It's a lot. And I have just never gotten around to watching that. So... It's, uh... Um, it's it's definitely intense. What else? What yeah. else? What, what do I want Lucas to see? I mean... I want Lucas to watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, man. I want Lucas to watch Fear yes, and yes, 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 yes. Fear a, and Loathing. What a legendary film. What a legendary film. Hopefully we land on that one day. I want to rewatch it. <laughs> yep. But I'm I'm holding off rewatching it because uh mm-hmm. I, yeah. Because it's it's on the wheel. Okay, uh, well, let's spin this wheel. Let's mm-hmm. see what we get. Here let's we go. Do it. And we are spinning in three, two, one. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> nice. Okay. Did we get our wish? This is it weird. intense? Ben and I were... I mean, it's intense in, in a way, definitely. Uh, ben and I were just talking about this film not too long ago. Uh, we landed on Marriage Story. Oh. 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 I mean, it definitely is intense. <laughs> yeah. Not not in the thriller type of way, but I, it definitely has its intense moments. I love Marriage Story. I haven't seen it. I actually I watched it pretty recently. I haven't seen it since it first came out, so that was like two years ago. Now I get wow, how, it's been two years. Jeez. I watched yeah. Marriage Story in this summer, or like last summer, so like a year ago. Sure. Yeah. This was like my most anticipated film of 2019, which tells you how weird I am. Because 2019 <laughs> had some of the biggest End films <laughs> of the decade. Scorsese, Tarantino. I mean, you had like, what were, what were some other 2019 films? Parasite. You had 1917, the one-take war movie. And yet my most anticipated film 
was a two four four three Netflix film about a couple going through a divorce. And it's just like so them they, talking and arguing for like an hour and, and forty five minutes. And did it hold up? Yes. Yes, it did because it's Noah Baumbach. I think that this is my um, highest rated film from twenty nineteen. It's like two above Parasite on my top one hundred list. So yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean. This this film tears you apart. For sure. Um, yeah, like I I remember seeing the trailers for this movie because they dropped two trailers for this movie. One was Adam Driver trailer and one was Scarlett Johansson trailer because they were like the whole point was they're not siding with the character, so you get one trailer about each character, which was genius marketing. And the music choices were so good i was just hyped i was like yes this is gonna be the movie of the year Mm. and it kind of was i mean i think that it's 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 one one of my highest rated yeah it's one of them yeah Uh, that was everyone who hasn't seen marriage story go watch it because it's on netflix it's a netflix film so you can anyone who has netflix can watch this movie Mm -hmm. um yeah with that being said, I'm kind of hyped to rewatch this. Thanks for listening to Lars and the Real Girl. Yeah. And we'll come at you next week. Oh, wait. Let's get a plot synopsis. That's what oh, we need. Bet. Plot synopsis. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I feel like it shouldn't be that long. Yeah, it's pretty simple. All right. Here we go. A stage director and his actor wife struggle through a grueling coast-to-coast divorce that pushes them to their personal and creative extremes. My guy yep. Noah Baumbach coming in with the concise, kind of vague plot Noah summaries. Noah Baumbach. This is our first Noah film, right? No. This is our first one. The Life Aquatic. No? Oh, okay, but he didn't direct that. He but he just wrote it. Co-wrote it. He co-wrote, co-wrote it. Co-wrote it. Yeah, but, you know, I like me some Noah Baumbach. Mm-hmm. Honestly, love his films. He's like one of the ultimate indie indie filmmakers out there right now me too i mean he has Um, he's co-written my second favorite movie of all time so yeah there you go there you go Um, i love this man this is one of our many a24 films actually no i don't think we've done that many a24 films but we've done a few is it Um, even on my a24 ranked list no it's not okay so i forgot it (laughs) well there you go well thank you everyone yeah for uh listening And we'll see you next week with The Marriage Story. Thank you for listening to Slightly Qualified Film Students. Make sure to tune in next week for a new film discussion and review. Our theme song is Slightly Sexy by Thompson Springs. Make sure to subscribe and leave us a like. Send us feedback and comments as well as your thoughts on the film. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at S underscore Q underscore F underscore S. If you would like to send us a question or a comment for next week's episode, you can email us at sqfilmstudents at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all next week. Bye.